So y'all didn't do the countdown? Oh, well, sure for me too, thank you. Welcome to Kingdom Life Bible Study. Good evening. How y'all doing? Good, 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 good. Uh, this is Kingdom Life, the place of truth, life, and community. And as our, uh, we call it our midweek tap in, where you can recharge and be uh, refueled. Amen. It's the real. Uh, if you hear me, just, just say this with me. Say, Sunday, Sunday. is not enough. not enough. Good, good, good. Now what I want you to do, uh, if you're on the screen, turn your attention. Uh, Fred, let them know they're a little loud out there in the hallway. Yeah. Just tell them it carries. That's all. They don't know. That, that carpet don't uh, absorb, uh, 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 that wood don't absorb the sound. That's all. Hey, right, so give me the, uh, give me the, uh, what I'm saying? Give me the announcements. Let's run. Give me the announcements. Get ready to dive into this. I'm just waiting on the announcements. Amen. Intercessory prayer, Wednesday. Before Bible study, we have intercessory prayer at 6.30. Uh, so uh, make sure you come in. And saturate, uh, you can also uh, saturate the, the, this the, the presence uh, in this place with, Bible, with, with prayer. So that's at 6 30, and we start at Bible study at 7. Uh, then we do it Thursday. So tomorrow we have uh, intercession prayer. We just come in on your lunch break, come in if you're off or whatever. We'll be here from 12 to 1. We'll be here from 12 to 1. And then Sundays at 10 o'clock before worship at 10 30. All right? So. We do that next. The Brotherhood Fellowship. Second Saturday is at 10. So this Saturday is our Brotherhood Fellowship. Come on, uh, if you're a man, come on out. Man, come on out, come on out. It will be here this Saturday at 10 a.m. We have food and we're going to our discussion, teaching, whatever it, it'll end up being. <clears throat> next. Uh, we have adult foundation classes. That's every uh, second and third uh, Sunday. Um, and we begin that at 9 a.m. We just go with foundations. We go, uh, I know some of y'all still like to call it Sunday school. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's all good. Our mental health symposium. Woo! Come on and clap it up. And we said, it's not the devil, it's anxiety. Let's talk about it. Amen. That's going to be the first. Saturday in May, uh, from May 4th at, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's going to be here. Hey, there's a $25 registration fee. We need you to go ahead and sign up. Uh, we have awesome speakers. You see our very own Quentin O'Pong, all right? Our very own Mr. Cheryl Dean. We have Ms. Yvonne Pitts. And I think that's this Rhonda Miller. That's Rhonda Miller um, who will be here. So. So I don't know, we, this, this is going to be our 10th year. We, we, uh, I'm going to make it seem like we uh, started it, but we had, we've been on uh, talking about mental health uh, before it became popular. Amen. We knew it needed to be talked about. Amen. So come on, come on. Next. Oh, the women of Arte, y'all will have a meeting. All right. Bring a cover there. Uh, well, amen. Amen. This is for all women, whether or not you're a member of Kingdom Life or not. Fellowship begins at 11 a.m. Don't forget to bring your covered dish. Amen? Amen. Amen. Next, next, next. This is, uh, I don't know when this is supposed to close up, but uh, this is uh, something my wife put together for God called the home. So the women of Arte attended a conference with Priscilla Shower. It's going to be August 23rd through the 24th. Uh, we asking all we asked our ladies to reserve your room, which at the end of the day I don't know was a lie, but uh, talk to my my sister in the back before y'all leave. All right, if you if you're a woman and you're interested, amen. 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 Next, next, next. It's me. Somebody say it's me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so we on this thing on our um, me. We tap in and we, I do this like once every year. Or once every other year on how to study the Bible, my job is to equip you for life and leadership. My job is to uh, help you be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And it's good to see all y'all today as they continue to come in. Uh, 
So just remember, this is a dialogue, not a monologue. Amen? Say it with me. Say, this is a dialogue, dialogue. not a monologue. Yeah, so you have, well, ISIS did pass out some mics, and you're not going to be forced to talk if you don't want to talk, but uh, it's best, right? You get talked to or preached to on Sundays, we use this right here so we can have a discussion, amen? amen. Next week, I'll probably start back going in deeper to whatever I preach in on Sunday. How many of y'all are like that? We can just discuss that. And so I want you to be able to discuss the Word of God and talk about the Word of God. So what I always do, I like to, uh, before I go on, this is part two, but I always recap. I always recap of what we did the first week. Uh, anybody here last week so I can know how I'm at? Anybody here last week? Come, you can raise your hand, brother. Come on. I know you go to Mercy. There you go. You ain't got to be scared. Come on, raise your hand. Huh? There you go. All right. All right. Just want to make sure. All right. So, uh, does anybody that was here last week remember why I said we study the Word of God? I started out, because we're talking about how you, how you study the Bible. Why do you study the Word of God? All right, what else? That's a shorthand version. <laughs> I ain't mad. That's a shorthand definition I gave you. What else, what else Miko? Just say, Pastor, I ain't got the rest. I just, that, that's the most important right now. <laughs> that's how I put the uh, character of God in our hearts rather than be. There you go. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Go get the mic. You know, it's okay, Tasha. Come on. <laughs> Don't forget we got a TV audience. We worldwide webbing right now, too. Okay, I put um, to build the character of God in our hearts so it may be expressed in our lifestyle. That's it. That's why we study the Word of God. We study. God's word to be the character of God in our hearts so that it may be expressed in our lifestyle. There's no need to study it if you're not going to live it. That's a good personal quote for yourself. There's no need to come to church if you're not going to apply what you get at church. One of the things, and y'all hear, hear, hear me say, say this a lot, well, some of you, um, I don't think the adage or the saying that the church is a hospital is fully correct. I know it sounds good when you say it, don't it? It's a hospital. It's a hospital. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying I don't think it's the full. It's the full thing. Why would I say that? Before you start talking, make sure you get a mic. Why would I say that? Why? Why, if you know me, would I say that? So let me ask this question. How many of y'all have said that? It's okay you say it. It's okay. okay. Just raise your hands. Raise your hands. Y'all trying to make sure you <laughs> All right. So why, why would I say I don't think that's fully correct? I would say it because ultimately it leaves you in the mindset to thinking that you never get well or you never get equipped enough or healed enough to go serve. Subconsciously, you would think, I'm sick, so we can't sit. No, you come in here to get. So, what happens is, what happens when God heals you? I didn't say it one correct. I said I don't think it's the full thing because you you will always come in with the mentality of a sick person instead of sometimes a person who is equipped and empowered to go out and change the world. Doesn't mean you're not perfect, right? What it what it means is I, I don't I don't sometimes come come get come get my my dope hit. So whatever. Sometimes I'm just coming number one, and we're talking about it to get corrected to get reproved. Sometimes I'm coming to be trained in righteousness. 
right? We'll talk about that, right? And so now when I study the word of God, hear me, is there healing? Yes. But you know where also healing can come from? Your healing can come from you just being in community. Your healing can come with you fellowshipping with other believers. You don't have to be at a corporate church. If, you, if I would, I would uh, admonish you all to go back and look at the series I preached in October and November about the church. Right? And I talked about how the church was a triumphant. I talked about how the church was a change agent. I talked about how church. See, we got all these things when we think about the church and we've never really looked at it. And the study of the church is called ecclesiology. Say that with me. Say ecclesiology. ecclesiology. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it can be a medical stool. We can be patients and doctors. You're right. We can. Right? Or you can help be, you can, you know, there's only one great physician, though. Right? But we are gifted to heal. If we want, he, he want to say, you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So the church is a participa participatory thing. It's not something that I, watch this. So, so, so the church is a movement. Say that with me. Say church, church. is a movement. a movement. The church is the government of God. It's the relational and governmental aspect of God. Watch this. It's not necessarily that the church has a mission. It's that God has a church for his mission. You see what I'm saying? We are the, see, a lot of us come in and we get to the church and then we stop. But the kingdom is what, is what we're really trying to express. The kingdom is what we are displaying. The church is an instrument of the kingdom. mess you up, you can say, huh? You did what I'm saying? Yeah. See, I got so, so what this, all, so what this, this automatically takes me from being somewhere where I just come and get, 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 and never give, give, give. Because I realize I, we have a part to play in the story of redemption. Here's the question, what is your part in the story of redemption? Uh, I'm starting out, right? I'm trying to, I was just, y'all get what I'm saying? See, so, so when I come get God's word, I'm really trying, watch this, I'm trying to be like him, but I'm trying to all of us get, I'm trying to get my mind renewed, but let me stay focused, amen. Now, why do we study God's word? You, you ain't got to say it out loud with me. We study God's word to build the character of God in our hearts so that it can be expressed in our lifestyle. All right, we talked about Acts 20 and 32. Anybody got any notes on that? Anybody got any notes on that? Acts 20 and 32. I'm just recapping right now. I'm going to get to it. This is how I just laid my foundation. All right, what time is it? I got, oh, I got plenty of time. Got plenty of time. Anybody got any notes on that? If not, here we go. Acts 20. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. T cut it on, cut it on. It should be green. All right, we're on the red mic up here. The red mic. Go ahead, Miguel. You ain't ready yet? Hold on. Red mic, red mic. I got him on TV. <laughs> go ahead. We good? Oh, yeah. It says the word will, one, build you up, and two, give you an inheritance. Right. So Acts 20 and 32, but it's the word of his what, Mikhail? Do you remember that? Okay. It's the, no, that's good. That's good. But you, you, you got a good main part. So Paul is finna get ready to leave. And he tells the, the people that he's finna leave, I commend you. I leave you here. I, I, I send you to. I, I commend you to the word of his grace. So first of all, the word was given to us by grace. Right? But this is what he says. This is why he says this. He says, I give you to the word, which is able, one more time, I care, is able to what? Build you up. So I can't be built up without the word of God. Amen. Well, let me explain that. The word of God is my main tool that builds me up. So this tells me whenever I'm broken down, whatever I'm lacking, I need to get in what? The word of God. And it also deals with Mikhail? 
give you an inheritance. It lets me know, right, what my inheritance is, what it says to all those who are sanctified. Who is here sanctified? Raise your hand if you're sanctified. Yeah, you all are sanctified. Raise your hand. Yeah. All sanctified means it's set apart. See, we've taken these words and made them mean or may not. All sanctified means is that you're set apart. How many of y'all ever went to a fine jewelry store or a watch store, right? So you ever went to, how many of y'all ever looked at a Bretling or a real Rolex? Right. You can't just get them and, and they ain't just give you that to walk around the store in. Matter of fact, you're probably going to be somewhere, unless you're in Vegas somewhere, you're probably going to be somewhere with a door is locked and most times they're going to ask you for your license. And the reason is, it's set apart. It's, that's what God did when he saved you. See, here, I got to get these tenses. Once you are saved, you are sanctified. But watch this, you are still going through a process called what? Sanctification that, 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 that transforms you into the image of God. So he's saying right here, guess what? I am giving you the word that's able to build you up, but also so you can let you know what inheritance you have. Two things. In the feeding, it says, so God, so you will know the hope of God, the calling, right? And his inheritance in the saints. Watch this. Do you know that you are God's inheritance? Oh. <laughs> what did that mean? What did you hear me say? You can repeat it if you say, I just heard you say, okay, what did, what did you just hear me say? Which, what does now, what does that mean to you? Don't think deep, just think. If we're a part of song, but what does that mean? We are God's inheritance. That, okay. So if I say, if I say, so what is an inheritance? What is an inheritance? Mm -hmm. But what else, though? Go ahead. Now, hold on, hold on. Give him that mic. Give him that mic. Shoulder trying to get by without the mic. Um, it's it's entrusted to you. So somebody, something's given to you okay. with, ex, with an, accept, an expectation that you are going to do something with it. Right. So if I say I got an inheritance, what that mean? You're right. It say you are God's inheritance. So what that mean? Ooh, say it out, bring it all together. Say it again. Right, now Shamik, I'm sorry, now tell me, now tell me what you, you ain't got the mic, go ahead. No, I'm saying I'm a value. You a value. In other words, you just don't get nothing, God gets you back. God said, I get my inheritance. You are my inheritance. I know that's so hard. It's just y'all, y'all brain trying to catch it. I'm glad it is. Because, see, it's a two way street. If you weren't valuable, he wouldn't have died for you. We're gonna kill low self esteem and insecurity tonight. And I'm just in the, I'm just in the, in the, in the, in the I'm just in the, the, re, the, uh, the real. I'm just in the, the, the recap. So I want you to understand. So now, now let me go back to you are his inheritance. I mean, you get an inheritance, which means I don't know what I have unless I'm in the word of God. I don't know what belongs to me unless I study. I don't know what he meant for me to walk in. And, and, and what, the, what the enemy operates in is darkness and your ignorance, and our ignorance, excuse me for saying your. He walks in our ignorance. That's why he makes you sleepy when you want to read the word. That's why you may have to get up and walk around. Now, that's why it may be more entertaining for you to pass along fights than Bible scriptures. Now, if you know me, because a couple of y'all in here, I do this with, I'm going to send you some silly stuff. <laughs> if you know me, I'm going to send you some stuff that's just straight silly. Whether it's church or not. I ain't going to send you nothing vulgar, but I'm going to send you some silly stuff now. Because I just like to have a good time. Amen? Now, let's go to 2 Timothy. Let me get on. Oh, we still good. We still good with a recap. 
Y'all see me the recap? Dude, we just in the recap. Somebody say the recap. recap. All right. Somebody read 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17. 2 Timothy 3, 14. Don't read it. Don't read it. Just tell me if you were here, what did you get? Don't read it. We got, I'm going to fly a little bit. Anybody? 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17. With the, anybody who hear that, remember what we what we said about that? It's okay, Mikhail, if you want to keep talking, or whoever want to hear it. Mikhail, like a lie. Anybody? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, that God's word is for teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness. Okay. So, right. So this is what I want you to see. What you got, Jasmine? You need to answer. Second Timothy 3, 14 through 17. Yeah, it's Bible study. You can have it. Yeah, we, we just chilling. So this I want you to see. First of all, in verse 14, he says, uh, now let me go to verse 15. He says, uh, and from that childhood you have known what sacred writings. It, words should stick out to you. This, like this is sacred. When you hear the word sacred, what do you think about? Holy. Holy. What else? Set apart. Set apart. Something of value. Precious. So this is precious. This is sacred. This is, right, sacred writings which are able to give you the what? Anybody there? Depends on how you print it with value, what version you read, too. Sacred rights, which is able to do well. Make you wise. Right. 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 See that? Which is make you what, Joe? Wise. So the scriptures, so watch this. It tells me that the scriptures, I can find wisdom in the scriptures unto salvation. Watch this, I can find scriptures to, to get saved, be saved, but to also live saved. So, see, a lot of times, remember I said this last week, we want to fuss about stuff that really don't matter. Like, well, what the dinosaurs in the Bible? The Bible wasn't written to tell you about dinosaurs. It's not a ge geographical, historical book in that manner. The scriptures are here to help you see what it is to live like Jesus wants you to live. So it's not going to have every tidbit of history in it. It's only 66 books. The Bible is how many books? Written over how many years? How many years does it take to compile what we have as the Protestant Bible? Close. 1,500. How many different authors? Yeah, like 40. Like 40 plus authors. And none of the contradictory. It may seem different. All right. Here, here, here's what I want you, uh, let me keep, let me keep going. I'm going to get off the track. All right. So, so wisdom that leads to salvation. Uh, give me, uh, uh, and I think this is where you were going, Ingrid. So somebody give me the four things. Joe, you got your hand up? You just, okay. Give me the four things. I just didn't want to overlook it. Just give me, now give me the four things that this scripture. You say, our scripture is what? Inspired. You know type say, God breathe? That means it comes from the breath. It's, it's from the in depth of God. God. Our scripture is inspired. God breathe. And it's, it's what now? Okay, teaching. Number one, scripture is useful for teaching. What's number two? Correction. Okay, correction, right? A reproof, right? Well, they, they side to side. Jasmine asked me last week, like, what's the difference? I think reproof is a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. But it's also to reproof. So not only just teach you something new, it also may come to guess what? Teach you again. We can go and reproof some stuff, right? Now, now, number three is what? Number three is correction, right? Right, should be correction, right? It's all right, we, you're right though. It's training a correction, which means guess what? You can be wrong. Look at your name and say, you can be wrong. And tell them we all can be wrong. All right? When, me, when, me, when, Chan, when Chan was alive, we used to talk, we just said, what the words say? See, we just submitted to the word. You gotta have to submit to something. See, here go, see, here's where a lot of us come. I know what the word say, but we, you can't be a but. Either we're gonna go by the word or we not. Say amen. amen. <laughs> Number four, now, 
nah, nah, nah. It's training in, what? in righteousness. Which means there's a right way I need to be living. And the word of God used to train me. Why did it say so what? So that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good word. Now this is talking to teachers, but it's also for you. So watch this. In order for me to be equipped or adequate and prepared for every good word, I need the word of God in my life. Here's how I write that daily. Y'all ready? This is how I will write this if I was you. I need the word of God to do what I'm called to do in the way that God called me to do it. I love to see y'all taking notes. It's, it's good class. One more time, if I can say it for your mind. I need the word of God to do what I'm called to do in the way that I'm called to do it. I got it, Joe. I said it. Because <laughs> I was saying, I'm like, ooh, she's going to have me to say it one more time. Uh-uh. Jeremy got it. Jeremy gonna tell it to you. <laughs> Jeremy tell Keith for me right now. Uh, Igri got it. Nah, he's just joking. He's just joking. Still recap, all right? So get what I did. I set a foundation just about the Word of God. Now, when you're studying the Word of God, there are um, three to four what they call philosophies of translation. Say that with me. Say philosophies, philosophies. Of, translation. of translation. All right. So you probably want to read, if you're studying a text, hear me, it's a difference between reading and studying. So some people ask a lot of times, how do I know what to study? You have what, uh, what God gave you, the Holy Spirit. And sometimes certain stuff will stick out to you. Whatever sticks out to you and they ask you, that's probably what he wants you to study them in. And I think I told y'all this. I, my devotional is different from what I'm studying to preach. Very rarely do I do I um, do my devotional on what I'm preaching. Very, very. They, it does cross over. Now, what I do my devotional on may become something I preach later on. Right? But I've been, I'm led by the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying that's me. I have a fingerprint of God. Do like this. We have a fingerprint of God. So another preacher, his, with his study may be where he preached. I'm not knocking that either. You know what I'm saying? Me, I just like to get familiar with the word. And so for me, I meditate. I, you know, I do all that type of stuff, right? So uh, let me keep going. We're still good. Y'all got any questions? One type of translation, I won't say first, one type of translation is literal. It's word for word. Word for word. Right? Or let me say it like this, as close to the word as possible. The Old Testament was written in what? Say it loud. He Hebrew and some what? Some Aramaic. The New Testament, it's okay, it's all right. We all been wrong before, you, you ain't gotta be ashamed about that, you good. And the New Testament was written in what? With some Aramaic. And some of us say Jesus spoke what they call Koine Greek, K-O-I-N-E. Koine Greek was like just regular Greek, it wasn't high Greek, right? Or it was written in that, right? But really he spoke in Hebrew, my bad, so it was written in Koine, forgive me for that, right? How many languages did Paul write? This is not, I just want to see, I just want to geek out for a minute. That's not really a good Bible study question, but how many? Probably three or more. Probably three or more. Uh, he grew up a Hebrew, so that's Hebrew. He talked to Gentiles, that's Greek, he wrote in Greek. He spoke to a Roman soldier, they spoke Latin or either Greek. So he probably spoke easily three to four languages, easy. Right? As a matter of fact, he said he stood under Gamaliel, who was one of the chief um, rabbis of his day. So you gotta understand that, right? So let's get going. So you have literal, say literal. 
these are Bibles like when I read, when I preach out of a right, like a New American Standard, ESV, New King James, right? The next one you have, say dynamic, equivalent, or just say thought for thought. So what this does is it tries to relate a thought while maintaining the, 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 the language, amen? amen? So say, say it with me, thought for thought, thought. right? And the goal of this type is to find a precise equivalent for words, idioms, and grammatical constructions from the original language, right? It'll teach to keep historical and factual matters intact, watch like this, while updating the language. Grammar, style to improve communication. Here, 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 here is uh, if you need, if she needs some, some clean air. Here, 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 here's those, right? Uh, NIV, NLT, NCV, or CSB. All right, somebody got a question? Oh, okay. Go ahead, Dad. I didn't know what you thought I do for the cleaning. Now I was just um, thinking about what you said about Paul. Uh huh. And you were saying that Paul grew up a Hebrew, the, the three or four different languages that he spoke, right? Right. Um, and I was sitting here and I was thinking about how the Lord chose him. Right. Uh, and because of the different things that he went through, how he said he would do all these great things he was going to use them to do, uh -huh. and how he was able to reach so many people mm -hmm. because of his background. Right. And I was thinking about how, you know, that's why, you know, I was thinking about me uh, and other people too, how, you know, the Lord will use what you've gone through, your background, all that kind of stuff, right. to make an impact um, for the kingdom. Right. Right. You, know, you know, and I was just thinking about that, how God can just use. So don't feel like what you've been through will discount you right. from being used by God. Right, right, good. Because that's a great example of how he used Paul and all different things at his background, too. Right, right. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. I would go into it now, but I'm, I'm going to talk about it in a few minutes. That's good. That's good. Y'all hold on to that and remind me. So NIV. Here's another one. Here's another. So, so like for me, in the mornings, in the mornings, I, I might read, I might read my New American Standard, but I read CSB in the morning. I'm reading the Christian Standard Bible. Just right now, I'm reading through uh, First and Second Kings, right? And whatever stick out to me, I might write it down and come back later. Right now, I'm just doing it as a discipline and, and renew my mind. But I'm also looking at little stuff that may bring wisdom out. Y'all did what I'm saying. And so then, because what I do, how might the grace that's on me, I've already known, so I preach in series too. So preaching in series helps me because I, even though I might not necessarily know uh, all my points, I pretty much know what's next. Like, I got this Sunday and next Sunday topic already. Really, I'll probably be through with this Sunday tomorrow or at least by Friday. I try to be through before Saturday. Sometimes it carries over, depends on what I got. I already got the sermon for October 20, I mean, August 21st, and I probably had the one for August 20, I mean, not August, April 28th. I probably have it by the weekend, because I'm constantly thinking, I'm constantly praying. Now, that can be bad, too, because my, cause my, my, my brain sometimes don't shut off, all right? Here's another translation. So you got literal, you got dynamic or thought for thought, and you got paraphrase. I don't really deal with paraphrases too much, but they's okay. Paraphrase would be the message, the CEV, good news, and the living Bible. And what I would suggest you to do, you have them on your phone, right? Um, I would suggest you you read in all three. You read all, you read a literal, Word for word, you read a thought for thought, and you might pick up a paraphrase. All right, usually, usually what I tell uh, my ministers or whatnot when they're getting ready to preach to somebody, if you're feeling to do something, you need to read a text. Minimum 30, but you probably need to read about 40 or 50 times. 
just to get used to it. It's a nuance in that, right? So we good. Y'all good? Here go the types of study you can do. Here go the types of study. What are the types of study? Anybody remember from last week? What you got? Go ahead, Jasmine. Book, word. Wait, 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 wait. The people trying to get it, they want here. Book? <laughs> book study. That just means you're going to take and see what that overall book is about. You're going to look at the major themes, the major characters. Uh, that's the main, like the historical setting. All right? What's the next one? Word. Uh, you're going to do a word study. You may study, you may look at the word faith all the way through from the Old Testament all the way through the New Testament. All right? What's the difference? What does, what does pistols, a pistol really mean? How did it change? How did it not change? What's the next one? Character. Character. This is why I told Dick, uh, yep, the recap, pal, the recap. <laughs> uh, this is what I'm telling Dick by, by, by Paul. So here's the thing about Paul. So you, you're going to, like, just take Paul or David or whoever you want to write. You're going to look at who they were born. What made them? You know, what made Solomon different than David? Right? What made him out of all the kings? What, what can I learn from it? So you take Paul. Where was Paul born? Tarsus. What is Tarsus? Is Good. Y'all can't hear him, but it was a port city. What does that mean? Uh, Traders, people coming and going, different A languages. cultural center. Right? But they, so then you got a thing like this. What type of port city was Tarsus? Was it a little small or was it a big one? Big one. Y'all guess it. It's okay to guess. Right. So it was a, and if you study the background of Paul, it said he was born, he was a Tarsus. So he's letting you know something. He's letting you know his background. He's letting you know what was going on. So they said that Paul probably was in a place either like Atlanta or New York probably. Or maybe a little smaller. Why does this mean? It's like what Dad said. Now you see why he was called to be with the Gentiles. God could use his background. You can't use Peter's background. Peter was a Jew. Peter didn't go around Gentiles that much. That's why Peter was called to the uh, Jews, right? Even though he ended up going to Cornelius' house. But when he, he first had the issue, right? He had the issue. Y'all got to read your Bible. Remember, he saw this. He said, I, I can't go to a tanner's house. A tanner was somebody who dealt with uh, um, uh, things that were unlawful in the law. And then that one God brought down the sheet and showed him all this. And he said, guess what? Uh, don't call nothing I made unclean. Right? But see, Paul was used to dealing with ratchet people. Here's the other thing. Paul was well learned. That's, see, watch this. Peter, more than likely, if he's going to the Jews, he's going to start with what? Will he go to evangelize most of the time? Churches, are he going to start with scripture? Paul, because he's trained in a way he don't have to start with scripture. Y'all know this, see, this, this is why it's good to get the study, you'll see why. Y'all know the verse where he says, uh, in him I move, Live and have my being. Where did that come from? Yes, it was a poem. So it's like what I do on Sunday when I take something from a song and you and, and contextualize it for the gospel. That wasn't scripture. It became scripture because Paul quoted it. He couldn't go to them starting with the scriptures. They Greeks, that means they Gentiles, they don't know scripture. So really, we had to start with was a, a philosophical idea of where they were. It doesn't mean he was any less spiritual. He just said, hey, why would I go to somebody? I'm in Mars Hill. I'm in Greek. They don't know scripture. Stop being deep and start with people at. You can talk scripture without quoting it. The wisdom of it will let you talk it. 
So he said, he said, he said, I saw you dealing with some the unknown God. Let me know, let me let you know who this unknown God is. Then he started describing it. Then he comes in and said, the unknown God who you he this uh, this is what I'm gonna do one Monday, uh, the last Monday the God prayer. He started with where they were. <coughs> they don't know Philippians. They ain't read it. They don't know it. You blessed. You grew up in church. You got to be holy. Go to know. Okay, let me think. Let me let me pull some from their culture. <clears throat> Sometimes we go. See that what happened when when them other people came to evangelize us. You don't got to make me English. Just meet me in my culture. Because kingdom will translate anywhere. I ain't got to become white to be kingdom, and you ain't got to be black. See, that's a, see, I'm by culture. I'm by identifying with your culture, but there's also kingdom culture, right. which transcends any culture. Right. So I can maintain my Afrocentricity in the same time with kingdom, as long as it's not violating scripture. You can be Asian, white, whatever, and I can be African, and we still can operate that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. So, yeah, that's good. So, watch this. <laughs> I'm going to give you a song. <coughs> what was Paul's name? Was, it, was his name changed? Yep. Yes. To what? Saul. It wasn't. He, he had both names, and it depended on what group of people he was talking to, but he had both names. It necessarily wasn't changed. He had both names, and it depended it on what said he was Paul, who was called Saul. Paul is a Hebrew name. No, Saul is the Hebrew name. Paul is the, is the name he used when he was in Gentile land. I know we say it. Paul, he got turned. To, he got knocked out of the house and made smaller. So, no, really, he had both. It depends on where he was operating at. When he was around Hebrew Saul, when I'm with these folks who don't know nothing about the gospel, I'm Paul. He wrote to he wrote mainly to more Gentiles than than than, than Jews. Paul was a, a Greek name. Ooh. I love it. I love it. I love the teeth. All right? Now, well, you want to preach that, that's fine. But the truth of the matter is, like I just said, he really was called both. It just all depends on where he was. And the reason why we see Paul more is because the books he wrote were to Gentile cities. It's okay, we all said it. I have too. Say that with me. When you know better, you do better. Yeah, you ain't going to hell because you said it. It's okay. You know? <laughs> All right. Any questions? Anything on the TV? Y'all said something on the TV. Any comments? Oh, y'all quiet tonight on the, on, the, on this here, uh, tube, on this here World Wide Web. <laughs> what y'all got for me in here? Go ahead, Sean. Get the mic. Get the mic. Get Sean the mic. I'm finna go into my questions in a minute. Hey, just to briefly go back to uh, sure. <clears throat> the, McKay, the different type of Bibles and all that kind of stuff. Right. The um, it's amplified. Is that is that like literal? It is. Okay. It, the thing about amplified is this, that that I, I challenge it on is that what amplified will do is give you. Let's say you get to a word. It'll give you all the meanings of the word. That's why you see it say amplify. It's blowing up the word that they want to use. But it's considered little. It's considered little. Right? So here's go the method. Remember, I gave y'all a method last time. How we how we gonna start studying doing our devotion. Right? I call it soap. We call it soap. Right? A lot of churches use it. And that just means whatever scripture you come to, you you writing the scripture now. All right, you're writing the observation. What are you observing in the in that text? 
the A stands for application. Now that you have wrote it down, you observe, what did you what do you plan on doing? And then the P is for prayer. You write your own prayer out for it. Right? Now, uh, uh, another another thing about that is what you will also what we call inductive Bible study. So he's not so, but it's very it's very close. Instead of, instead of S O A P, it's O I A. So you do observation, and then you, what you do is the interpretation. So you observe what did you see, and then you write the op application. You can do that too. So it's about the same. All right. Now. When you're in a text, we good. We still good, Miguel. I know I took like 40 minutes on the thing. Yes, Jasmine. Yes, scripture. Observation. Application. And then a prayer. Yeah. All right. So here goes some basic questions. You want to ask when you're doing your Bible study, right? Your personal Bible study to God. Number, number one, who wrote the text? Who wrote the text? Uh, like that just said, what can we learn about the background of the writer? All right? Watch this. Who are they writing to? Right. What's the historical circumstance of the text? And for what purpose? All right. So I didn't know who they ran to. And so, and then, here goes something I want you to, uh, I'll throw this out there too, is like, uh, what genre is it? Is it historical? Is it an epistle? Is it a poem? All right? Because you're going to read it differently. Does God actually own a cattle on a thousand hills? He does, but, the act, but it's really a figurative speech to just let you know that God owns it all. Go ahead, Jasmine. How do you know the information based on how you read it? Okay, her question, because she doesn't have, I'm just telling people so they know. Yeah, no, you know because what you're going to do, thank you, and I just thought about this. Like last week, uh, I, uh, uh, Joe asked, hey, where did, where did you get some of these books from, right? Uh, what's the book? So I said, so what you want to do, here go a couple of books you need to get. You need to get an atlas so you can see the distance. I'm coming to your question. You need to get an atlas. So sometimes you can see how far when they say Jesus walked, walked here, walked there, right? And you can see where they were. You need to get uh, something that talks about custom and manners in biblical times or in the text. So you can understand stuff, like I said last week, uh, when I said uh, it's easy for a camel to get through an eye of a needle than a rich man to get into heaven, right? I said, what's that eye of a needle? Is it a sewing needle or is it the entrance to a city when a camel had to get on his knees? So you had to learn that stuff. Normally, Jasmine, get to your question, if you get a, 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 a study Bible, it'll have a background and what kind it is on there, right? Or you can get what they call a survey. You get a survey of Old Testament and a survey of New Testament. What surveys do is give you an overview of every book. And they let you know, it lets you know what type of literature it is. Like it's something called wisdom literature. That wisdom literature would be Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and uh, Song of Solomon, I think, is considered wisdom literature. Right? So when you read it, some of it, so you gotta understand all that stuff. But you don't have to make it hard. Don't don't freak out about it. Remember, we just gonna study. With God. I'm just giving you basic tools so you can be able to be uh, your own theologian at the house, but we're going to check it when you get in the community. Uh, you can't come with your own stuff. Right? Here's why you want to know the historical context of the Bible, because it can't mean nothing to you that it didn't mean to them. 
what we do is, I want to say make it relevant, we contemporize it to our day in the language. But if it, it got, it, when he said it then, that helps bring it out for the day. Y'all dig it? What was the purpose of him writing a book? He, uh, yeah, you get what I'm saying? So when you, so, so the, see, when I know the purpose, it may understand something. You got a microphone? Give it a microphone, please. And get, uh, yeah, in the back, behind you, Sean. Right behind you. Hey. You got to cut it on for me. I, I just was trying to make sure. So you're saying that there must always be a connection? Connection between what? Between scripture and if you're, if you're using it to give somebody, like, advice. Like, you're saying that it, we can't, basically you're saying that we can't twist it to make it um, oh, right. match, but it needs to have some sort of connection to exactly what that person is explaining. Right. Okay. No, we're not going to twist scripture. So here go two words. Say exegete and isogete. Exegete means I pull out. What I'm teaching you to do right now really is exegesis. Right? The science of interpretation is called hermeneutics. Stuff ain't big as science. People say it to make it sound deep. It just means the science of interpretation. All right? Who wrote it, this and that? Because here it is. I want to be faithful to the text and relevant to today. All right? Here, here, here go one. Here go one. Here, I'm going to give y'all one, right? Um, y'all, before I do that, so you might want to see... What sources did the authors even use? Like, is Jesus quoting a psalm here? What is he saying? Why does it mean? You want to look out for words that are repeated. Right? This is basic. I'm just ending this out for y'all today, right? Uh, is it a hymn that's written? Sometimes Paul, when he writes, he's quoting hymns. Right? So you got to ask yourself, uh, any questions? I ain't finished. We got a little, about 10 minutes. Go ahead. You got to get that mic so they can hear you. I can repeat it. Go ahead. Yeah, it is right there. Thank you, Tosh. <laughs> the Passion Bible. What? Uh, I don't know which one that is, to be honest with you. Like, I just gave you examples. It probably would tell you in the front, though. Like, when you go to your very front and they got all that right, it'll tell you, hey, this is a dynamic equivalent, this and that. I think the Passion Bible might be thought for thought. I think it's thought for thought, right? Yeah, I think it's thought for thought, right? And you want different translations so you can get a better understanding, but you may have a go-to. Mine is the New American Standard right now when I'm preaching. I'm just a literal dude. I like word for word. Here's the thing. The reason why you want different translation is because you may lose something in the translation. And what I mean by that, not the translation you, you have, but going from English or Hebrew, I mean going from Hebrew or to English. So now you just want the different ph ph philosophy. That's it. It don't mean that the word of God is wrong. I believe in this original language, it's inerrant. Right? And so we just got to catch that because it's the main tool. I just, why I, that's why I spent 30, 40 minutes recapping because I want you to understand that it's the main tool God has given us to live this life. And like I said, it's, it, the main gift is his son and the Holy Ghost. But the main tool is the Bible. It is how we renew our mind. Questions? What time? Oh, here we go. You really got about seven minutes. Ain't no game on the night. <laughs> USC don't want, you go I want. You ain't got nothing to do with it to get it. Y'all probably got y'all show it over like that. Go ahead, Joe. You got the mic. No, I'm just going to ask. Uh, it, so when you go on uh, the concordance. Okay, good, yeah. So the, like the strong concordance, is that something to help you cause with the literal translation to kind of get it from. That's good, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, so a strong concordance, and not, and the day, these days, now you can do it, you can do this on Bible software, right? So what a concordance gonna do, let's say I'm reading, I'm gonna take what I said last week, right? Let's say, um, 
And you should win your hood with nobody. That's what I mean, King James, right? You should win your hood with nobody conversation, right? And so you look and say, oh, so how she talk? So what you're going to do is like, now let me look and see what this word conversation means. So in the concordance, you're going to go everywhere you see conversation, but you're looking for that particular scripture, which I think is like in First Peter or something. So you're going to find what conversation in First Peter, whatever. So you're going to, when you see conversation, you're going to go over, there's going to be a number on this side. So since, since I know that um, um, the New Testament is written in what? I'm going to go to the, I'm going to remember that number and go to the Greek side and find that number. When I find that number, I is then going to define what that word really mean in a biblical text. And you'll see that that word conversation, that really mean lifestyle. King John used an old English word. So here's what you're going to be careful of, particularly when, when you read like King Jane, uh, New King Jane a little bit. You want to see, you want to you want to use a biblical dictionary to define biblical words. Now, in more modern translation, you may can get away with with use like New American Standard, like I use. You may can use a regular dictionary, but even me, I still go to a concord. I just do instead of that big old book. I just go to my Bible software and click on it, and it just tells me, and it brings out certain nuances. Right. Like when it says to uh, endure, it means to wait under. See, now I know, now, okay, so endure, that means I got to be under something. I got to be under some type of pressure. See, even that nuance right now now lets me know that there are going to be some stuff I just got to wait under. So to endure means to sit down and wait under something. Did I got it? All right, give me a couple more minutes. I know we at the time, but this is my last night teaching on this. Anything else? I would really ask now for you to hold your peace. You're going to be able to study when you get out of here, though. All right? So, uh, I want you also to uh, go to, uh, okay, so everybody go to Philippians. If you don't hear me, probably teach on this, but I want everybody to go to Philippians 4 and 19. Then I want somebody, well, go down and then find these two verses. We're going to end on these, I think. Then you find Jeremiah 29, 11. I love that one, don't y'all? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which one y'all want to talk about first? That's one vote. Anybody else? <laughs> okay, we'll talk about Philippians 419. Read it. Somebody read it. Philippians in the New Testament. It's okay. I've been I told you to find uh Obadiah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting you know now, Obadiah, I'm going to the cook table content. <laughs> but Kel, you say Obadiah? Oh yeah, table content. Here we come. <laughs> you want so, me to read? Go ahead, Dad. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> that look like what it said. <laughs> and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? Well, I think not, you you did. To, not you did. Not you did. You've been around me too long. You should, you should catch up with this. What that mean? Come on. <laughs> See everybody looking. Y'all can speak. It's okay. What does it mean? <laughs> he said, say something else to it. <laughs> 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 ain't nothing to it, Sean. <laughs> Sean said, no, nah, I don't I, I don't been on your teaching too long. I know, I know it's something. Else. Go ahead, go the, ahead, Sean. The, the key. The key word was to his riches and glory, not to our riches and glory. Okay, that's, so, that's so good. To, that, to that, him. That's good. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Sean. I feel like it's contentment. It's contentment? Contentment, like being content. Being content. Tell me what you mean. I'm trying to get it. Because like he's writing in prison. 
Okay. Oh, okay. So, so it's, it's like, it. you know, him writing in prison, he's saying that even though he's probably not feeling that, like he's been uh, prison, obviously, but he's saying that from God's glorious riches, uh, he's still going to supply all your needs no okay. matter what circumstance. I like, like showing he's a thinker. You're close, but that's not it either. <laughs> it's okay. What, what does it mean? Um, I think God's saying he'll supply our needs because they're already, they've already been supplied. Uh, okay. How many of y'all believe that scripture? <laughs> he will do it. I heard you say that. Yeah, shout out about that. I heard you got saw Alan? Alan, like, I'm sticking with Sean. This is a set up. I ain't for this lady now. All right. All right. Y'all ready? All right. Go to verse 15. Now read now. For every text, there's a context. Now I want y'all to tell me what it means. I can't hear you. Okay. I got you. You're right. What she said was right. What does the ver what does the scripture mean now? So it's a personal letter, like like Shola said, he's in jail. What does it mean? Is that a promise? It's not it's not deep, y'all. It's not deep. It's not deep. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. Michael, so, hold on. You got something, Michael? Oh, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I guess since he starts talking about what the Philippians did for him, he's saying because of what y'all did for me, then you're going to get yours from, from In me. other words, you just can't claim the promise if you ain't sold in nobody's life. Look at the scripture. He said, see, why this? We say, why they preaching on money? He's talking to them about money. And so what he's telling them is, because you have sold into me, my God going to supply all your needs. You can't really claim, claim, claim the promise if you ain't telling them they ain't someone. Look, you yourselves, so y'all talking over that. Let me break it this down. You yourselves, I also know for living that at the first preaching of the gospel after I had left Macedonia, why right, there's no church shared with me. See, he's talking about pursuing into his ministry. That's why y'all got to stop listening to people when they talk about money. They, they ain't in the book. Paul is writing a very personal letter and telling them, I'm. I, 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 Y'all the one who shared with me from the beginning. So really what he's doing is encouraging them. Right then now he says, for even if that's going on, you sent the gift more than once for my needs. Start talking about you can't even put to help people in ministry. Salvation is free. Ministry ain't. Not watch this. He says, not that I seek the gift itself, watch what he said, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. This is why we talk about being generous. You got to be generous. He said, I don't seek the gift. This going to your account. See, when you can't go on a mission trip and you send me or you send somebody else, you are going with that person. Because you are helping the furtherance of the gospel. You got to renew your mind in this thing. Hold on, there I come. He said, but I have received everything in full. I am amply supplied, like she, like she just said, having received from Epaphroditus that what you have sent the fragrant. Watch this. He says, watch this. Y'all got to miss Y'all got to get this. Your gift is a fragrance. When you show in the kingdom, it's a fragrance to God. It's a sacrifice. God, when you come and give God doing like this, that's why you still broke, to be honest with you, probably. And you, it's a bad steward. 
You don't give. It's the book. Look at the book. Am I lying? It's in the book. Do you see the book? Tell somebody it's in the book. Say truth. truth. All right. Look at it now. I ain't trying. I ain't got to twist your arm. He says that set up a sacrifice well pleasing to God. Now he says, and my God will supply all your need according to his written. Why? Because you sold. In other words, you don't have to worry about ever having anything because you sold into ministry. Oh, my God. Y'all, you see, I don't want to be free. Tell somebody, say, I want to be free. <laughs> we got three minutes. I'm going to take you to 18. Anything, anything else? I'm going to give you 18. I'm going to give you that work. I want you to see that. So here's another thing. I always read two or three verses ahead, and I always read two or three verses below. And sometimes you may have to read further. Give it a mic. Yes, ma'am. That's what I was going to say. Like how when people quote scriptures, you can take things out of context if you're not reading what's around it. Right. That's all. Not read it around. So now let's go to, let's go to y'all, one of our favorite scriptures. Oh, they are. Y'all don't want me to touch that one, do you? You don't want me to touch that Jeremiah 29, 11. Y'all want me, anybody want me to touch it? Yes. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Jeremiah 29, 11. Somebody read it. You probably already that. Somebody, y'all can quote that one. Yeah. Y'all can quote. Ah! Oh! Wow. <laughs> Jeremiah, come on, somebody read it. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Uh-huh. Plans for welfare. Yes. And not for calamity. Right. To give you a future and a hope. Uh-huh. Mm. Mm. What do you mean? <laughs> so I'm like, just tell us. You ain't gonna set me up no more. Go ahead, Mike. You ain't want the mic? Yes, you're on the mic. Yes, you're on the mic. So I, I don't know or recall all the details. But I know it has something to do with the fact that the people were in some sort of captivity. My or boy, my boy, going into it or my something boy. like that. Let, let's go on. Let's go on. Run this thing. Go to verse. Go go to verse. Uh, I ain't gonna even take you long. Cause I got y'all over now. I know the people on the TV. They looking. I'm. I done made them mad. That's okay. They say if you continue in my word, you will know what the truth and the truth will what. Made you free. Come on now. Tell somebody I just want to be free. So I'm not saying you can't claim this as a promise, but I want you, I want you to see why God said this. Look at Anna. Anna already don't start reading. No, don't start reading. I'm just messing with you. Let's go to uh go to verse go to let me see. No, 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 no. I don't even want to go down. Let's go to verse four. I want you to see it all day. So isn't it basically what's going on is that they yeah, in We got it. We, we, we finna get it. Verse 4. We're gonna do it together. We're gonna finna read it together. It's okay. It's okay. That's okay. You're right. I already hear where you're going. Somebody read, start reading that verse 4. Come on down there, verse 11. Come on. Go ahead, Sean. Read. I want to hear the deep voice. Come on. I want it, I want to sound like God reading. Come on. <laughs> We ain't going to call you God. We're going to put that pressure on you. But come on. You said verse 4. Verse 4. Come on. <laughs> what y'all on? What verse you reading from? Uh, King James. All right. Go ahead. We'll take it. Come on. Thus, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are ca carried away captives. You, you, you carried away. Oh, I already done messed you up. Come on, let's go. Whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem Whoa, unto Babylon. God said, I caused you to be carried away. Oh, y'all better read y'all Bible. Come on. Build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Uh huh. Take you wives uh -huh. and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminished. Sean, hold on. In other words, y'all going to be here for a minute. Yeah. Oh, y'all didn't want to hear that. My breakthrough coming, it's going to be sudden. No, just go ahead and sit it down. 
<laughs> Take you some, yeah, get your wives, get your children together. This ain't gonna be quick. Cause y'all keep turning your back on me. Yeah, I better read this stuff in content. Huh? In love. I'm doing this for you because I love you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all know who I heard in my face hey, when I say that. You mad. <laughs> you big man. You big man. You big man. Huh? Why y'all ask what I'm about? What, what, why y'all know it? Y'all gonna look at me like, oh, pastor. Y'all, why y'all? Go, go keep going, Sean. Joe, we gonna get you out of here. Come on. And seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captives. Y'all know why this so deep. We done got captured, and you want me to seek the peace of the city I'm living in. You want me to seek the peace of the city that done overtook us. Y'all better learn to guard who you at. Do y'all understand that's why, that why uh, Jonah really didn't want to go tell none of them? It really wasn't because he was just mad. He knew how gracious God was, and he knew if he went and went and uh, taught them people to be repent, that God would forgive them. And see, if you really knew how a Syrian um, torture was, you would understand Jonah. They would bury you up to your neck and sometimes pull your lip over your head. And Jonah said, you want me to go tell these Jonah to repent? They give it to us. Y'all better stop praying, praying this stuff for your haters and learn how what God really do. That's why you got to read this in context. I ain't saying I got it all right too. I want, to, I want some people to get it. But then I back up when I realize I didn't get everything I put to God. See, this is real Bible study. That's why you got to read this stuff like this. Keep going, Sean, because I got them pray their time, but I got them on the hook now, though. And pray unto the Lord for it. For uh, in Hold on, pray unto the Lord. I don't know, Dale, don't worry about it. I'm going to stop breaking it. Come on. <laughs> Dale, like, stop. No, no, we ain't going to stop. Because I want you to get where he's doing it, what's going on right here. Go ahead, Sean. I'm, I'm, I, I might start this time because <laughs> Dale and get mad. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. Can I say something like that? Yeah, I'm just starting to leave people talking about it's almost over. Now you're going to be here for a minute. Don't let you these false prophets about you finna come out. Now you may, you may. I don't know. That comes between you and God. But he's, he, God telling you right now, start listening to them. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, Sean, you reading ahead. You see it. Go ahead. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord. Why this? That after 70 years be accomplished. <laughs> That man didn't say 68. That man didn't say 69. That man said, y'all going to be here setting them. Keep going, Sean. Now watch. Here comes, here, here comes your verse. Did I, <laughs> <laughs> that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. Mm -hmm. For I know the thoughts that ah! I think, <laughs> think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That's your verse in context. I'm not saying that God won't make this word rhyme for your situation now. Because this word may come to you after you have been suffering. But what I am telling you is, this word in context is, y'all finna sit here for a while. Go and have you some children in Babylon. And don't be sitting here talking about we finna overthrow the government. now, because I tried to give you government that you wouldn't follow. Go ahead, I think Jamie has some too. How did y'all like the Bible stand on tonight? Go ahead. Go ahead, Jacob or Jasmine. Come on. Y'all will never look at Jeremiah 29, 11 again. Y'all can quote it. It's okay. Put it up. 
You might be like, Lord, I done went through hell. I'm claiming this scripture. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on. I was just going to say that I was, when uh, up in like around verse 7, when he was, when the Lord was saying to uh, pray for the city and the welfare of the city and all that, I thought about how Jesus said over the New Testament the same thing when he was saying, bless those that persecute you and despitefully use you. Yeah, that's, like that's that Dwayne, same love. The same. the same love in the Old Testament God show, Jesus shows in the New Testament. And I, was just, I just noticed how, yeah. how both of them were the same, mm -hmm. and they were speaking the same thing. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Jasmine, would you like to say something before we get out of here yeah. tonight? I was just saying, uh, it re not reminds me, but um, <clears throat> one of the things that I was, well, not taught, but one of the things I was taught was the scripture, for I can do all things in Christ Jesus. And a lot of times people, you know, you know, take that as, you know, I can conquer this thing or, you know, through his strength that we could get mm. through it. But a lot of, but when we exegete, am I right? Exegete. Exegete. Yeah. Exegete the scripture. He's not talking about like overcoming his circumstance he's saying even though you know i serve the lord he has the power to sustain me within this for i can do all things through christ including this hard thing right because in that same yeah. verse he talks about i learned how to be a base in the bomb i didn't take you up to that because i didn't think you could take too much shot tonight <laughs> how y'all feeling i mean you should be feeling good you should be feeling good do y'all have the basic utensils? I got your shoulder. We finna get, we gonna get out of here. Y'all got the basic utensils on how to steady? All right? Mm -hmm. All right? Who wrote it? Why they wrote it? This and that. All right? Now you got context. All right? Go ahead, shoulder. So, but I just wanted to mention that it's a website called the Blue Letter Bible. Mm -hmm. And um, anybody who have resources, like I think it has a strong concordance and also the interlinear Bible. That's good. Um, where it's just like if you want, most people don't know the Greek or the Hebrew, but you can still read it in that version. They'll have the Amer like the English underneath the Hebrew or the Greek, um, and you can just explore. They have all types of stuff. So it's the BlueLetterBible.com. All right. Here's what I want to do. Here's what I do. My job, uh, my apostolic authority in the teaching. You know, the as, a, as, a, as having the apostolic grace, I build. I'm a builder. I'm always talking about taking territory. Another grace on me, though, I'm a pure teacher. So my job, and I just having to pass and lead this church, my job is to wolf-proof you. And the only way I can wolf-proof you is not just always feed you candy and high-point sermon. My, my job is to teach you how to be uh, thinking Christians that walk out. You're going to have enough hell in your life. So I'm not saying every time I come in here and preach, you're going to go out and beat up, but I'm going to equip you so you can go out and live the life that God wants you to live. Right? And so nobody just can't pull it over. Now, don't be challenging everybody. Is that in context? Just say, okay, then. Because some things can be rhema. I, I did it to shock you. That verse can be a rhema word, which means we're word word. So it can be rhema, which means God can quicken that verse for you. Because you may have been in the hell hole. And he may give you Jeremiah 29, 11 as a source of confidence. But I also want you to see in context when God said that, like, they were finna sit down and really be in, he said, you're not going nowhere for 70 years. Then he called, it's like God saying, I know I'm whooping you, but I know the thoughts I got for you. It's like, you, you, ever, you ever got a whooping your mama done tried to hug you? <laughs> well, some of y'all, some of y'all mama probably just beat you and body slammed you or something. Well, yeah, oh, they say that. This is going to hurt me more than it hurt you. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it's not. It's not. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. You had your hand. This Sorry, I was thinking about the verse from Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm -hmm. um, when I read it at home, because it's on my desk, I mm -hmm. always looked at it as if God gave me a promise and said he had plans for me, that means that I can't be crushed by whatever it is that's going on in my life. So basically, it's like this joke that be going around the internet, and it'd be like, um, if an earthquake happens, but it'd be like, I know what God told me a few years ago, and it hasn't come to pass, so that means I'm not dying yet. I think of it like that, like I can't die from this mm -hmm. if he told me I had something to do, and it hasn't passed. That's a good way. I'm not disputing that. That might be your rival for right now. I'm saying the same thing. But just in case. (Laughter) 
I'm just, I'm just saying. But God, that's what the verse is saying. I just want to show you in context why he said it. Really what it was, y'all, to let you, here's how you can, this is how I want you to contemporize it. No matter what trouble I'm going through, God wants what's best for me. That's the hope of the verse. So you want the wisdom, the wisdom from the verse. And the wisdom from the verse is, we in here right now. The wisdom is we are going, I don't, I'm, ooh, I'm going to say a bad word. I don't care what you prayed away. Three years ago, COVID was here. See, sometimes as Christians, we got to be mature. And sometimes God ain't going to bring us out. He's going to take us through. Yeah. And that's what you got. That's what I'm going to I want to get out of it. It's hot. But, so I got to realize, guess what? We just going to have to go through this one right here. And he might just take me through in Goshen. Goshen was a land when they were coming out of Egypt. It was a land of plenty of this and that. He, just, he might not start the earthquake or the flood. It may just happen, but you're going to go through. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I don't want you to be mature. I'm not saying be looking around the corner for something and like, oh, Lord, no. Well, okay, God, if this is it, I got to go through it. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to go through it praising. It ain't gonna, everything ain't going to feel good. Everything ain't going to be right. And then here's a, I got to realize that this is a storm of correction or a storm of perfection that I'm in. Man, do I have my own self in him because of the decisions I made? Because that's why they in captivity. Or are you still building me up for some? Either way it go, I'm, I'm, I'm getting shaped into his image. That's what you got to see. Either way it go, I'm getting conformed to his image. And Lord, if I figure out it's a storm of correction, God forgive me. Let me repent. Let me get it right. If it's a storm of profession, okay, build me up then, God. Help me. He said, by gold has been tried in the fire. By gold has been tried in the fire. The only way you're going to get them impurities out is to go through some fire. No, I didn't like it either. But it is what it is. It is what it is. So people are like, how do you, how you, your strength? It's only by his grace. But I, I'm saying I'm out a long time ago. He, this, this is who I'm called to be. I don't quit because it don't go my way. I may cry. I may say whatever. I may say something on the day. People ask me, you mad at God? I did. I found myself, I did get mad a little bit. I'm like, God, my wife put to see her grandkid. But you know what? Nevertheless, let key keep going. You got to. I don't know. I don't know. You lost your husband in the car. I don't. You know we don't know, but I can't, we can't quit. That's what he was telling them. I know the plan. So, yeah, like what she said, yeah, I still got a hold on Jeremiah 29 11. But what get, would keep me going is knowing they were in, they, got, they had it for 70 years. So, we, so our testimony a lot of times. On this stuff, because let me just speak freely. We 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 don't we don't go through that, and sometimes we are so weak that people say, "Why do I want your faith?" I told y'all if y'all remember the morning of my wife's funeral, I led a dude to Christ because of what he saw and how we did it. Now I'm thick. I'm finna go bury my wife, but I still can't be so thick that somebody don't get to meet the Savior. Yeah. So it would have been our feet. Oh, no, Lord, let me lead this man to Christ. I'll cry later and we'll keep going. It didn't, it, don't, it didn't take but five minutes. I can get on with the grieving after five minutes. I ain't Superman, I just know him. And sometimes you don't, you don't get to know. But see, that would, that would, see here, here, and we got, I'm going to be saying that. But here's what's really when you get in this word. When you get in this word and I treasure his word. See, some of us, we got the door still open to going back. And some of us done came too far to go back. 
Well, you're not carrying too far to go back. You don't ran too many hills now. You don't live too many ways. You don't gave up. You don't gave up too much. You you got to get. You got to go to. Uh, man, I don't got to be at five o'clock in the morning too much. But if you come to take this position, it's gonna be a dog fight. It's gonna be a dog fight now. You come to get wet, home. I done set out a year. I done did that. Nah, we gonna have to. We gonna have to. We gonna have, you gonna have to run some routes. You gonna show know how to run some routes. You gonna have to be Michael Irvin to come out here and get my spot. You gonna have to be something Michael Irvin might not can't get it right now. I got that dog in me about this. And that's how you got to be about your walk with Christ. I am not giving up. I got to keep going. And the only way I can do that is to get in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all good? Yes. Is the Lord good on tonight? Yes. Give him my hand a clap of praise. Yes. <laughs> hey, then what I want y'all to do, I want y'all to... Um, if you're, on the, if you're on the screen, I want y'all to uh, I want y'all to do this. Bring it up. And we don't get on out of here. I don't kept you. But well, I don't kept you out of eight thirty. That's good. That means Bible study was good. That means y'all were hungry. Y'all tell my friend they should have been at Bible study. They say should have been at Bible study. <laughs> I'm just crazy. Y'all ready? If you got something to give right there, you can give on the screen. I'm going to get you out of here. Hey, y'all make sure y'all come uh, Sunday. Bring somebody with you. I'm preaching. You, you, we're still in radical questions, but I didn't pose the, the title as a question. It's an imperative. I went to Northeast High School. We know what imperative means. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I, the, the title of it is Jump Off the Porch. Yeah, tell somebody to jump out the porch. Yeah, tell them to jump out the porch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump out the porch. Tell them. Yeah, jump out the porch. Get out of that porch. The question comes from, though, do you want to be made whole? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. 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 Hey, she got me. Yeah, jump out the porch. Amen. Y'all see it? Somebody, we need that type of energy anyway. Amen. We need that type of energy. Some of y'all, y'all bedtime. Let me get ready to get y'all out of here. Some of y'all, y'all bedtime. Mikhail, you got to get up in the morning? Oh, yeah. Mikhail, show up. Go. Mikhail going to tell my pastor, she's going so long, trying to walk out of her own. <laughs> hey, stand on your feet so we can pray. Y'all like to tap in on the night? Did y'all like to tap in on the night? You good tap in on the night? Midweek tap in? All right, all right, all right. Next week. And sometimes I take special, I take special uh, topics and pre, but I think next week we we'll probably go in deeper. I really want to, I want to go in deeper with what I pre uh, Sunday coming up. I think it'll bless you. It's going to be good, man. Trust me. It's going to be good. We're going we gonna to deal with some relationships and everything. Father, we thank you for the night, and we thank you for being a great God. Uh, we honor you on tonight, and we thank you for those who have came out in Bible study, God. I feel as though, Lord God, I, matter of fact, I sense, I know that there are change agents in here. That kingdom of life will be a place where people know the word and live the word. Our steady time, and not just steady, our prayer time will increase. Thank you on the day. Watch them as they go home, and let us have a Holy Ghost powerful time in our own prayer and worship time, but in our corporate time on Sunday. And also let our men's meeting be filled with revelation and fellowship. So in your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, thank y'all. Y'all have a good one. Tell somebody, hey, Bob, whatever you need to tell them.